we're showcasing female identified filmmakers in a leadership role. Um, this is our first time doing something in the past, which is very exciting for me, because it's, it's very much like my area of interest, like women's contributions to the sort of early days of cinema. Um, so this is part of BFI Comedy Genius, which is a nationwide celebration of comedy in film. Uh, I'd like to thank the Film Hub Midlands for funding this. So thank you very much, Film Hub Midlands. Um, so this Mabel, Margaret Mabel Norman's leading lady of film comedy is a package of four short films from the BFI National Archive. It lasts about 80 minutes. There's not a single long. It is silent, <laughs> which I assume you all knew when you signed up for it. <laughs> but there is um, a really good commissioned uh, score by the Meg Morley today. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to tell you a little bit more about Mabel Norman, just to give you a little bit of context, because I think a lot of you don't know who she is. Um, she entered the movies at only age 16 in 1909 in America. Uh, at the age of 18, after starring in D.W. Griffith's Fate Turning, uh, she was noticed by the king of comedy, Max Sennett, who brought her to California when he founded Keystone Studios. At Keystone Films, she showed a flair for comedy and quickly rose to become a big, big box office draw. She's even credited as being the first film star to, throw, to receive a pie thrown in the face. <laughs> <laughs> The original, exactly. Uh, obviously, a, a hallmark of comedy ever since. She played a key role in starting Charlie Chaplin's film career when he went to America. He acted as her leading man, and she mentored him in a string of films, often co-writing and directing films with him, until he got mad and didn't want to work with him. <laughs> her career did suffer in the 1920s after her name was linked with some pretty widely publicized scandals. Some pretty serious ones, like the, mur the unsolved murder of uh, director William Desmond Taylor, as well as her chauffeur shooting someone with her pistol. Another one being that a lot of you might have heard of, the trial of Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle, who she had worked with frequently, which resulted in a lot of her films being banned from cinemas across the country, which lost her a lot of revenue. Um, none of this was helped by the gossip mill because of this. Who is the gossip mill? Which started unfounded rumors about Mabel Norman, which was repeated in Kenneth Anger's controversial book, Hollywood Babylon, text almost single-handedly responsible for much of the misinformation of that time period. I have an axe to grind there. Okay. <laughs> uh, she did make a comeback in 1926, which included the short film Should Men Walk Home, which you all see tonight. However, it was not to last that she died as a result of TB in 1930 at the age of 37. Hmm. Before we get started, I'm just going to finish with a quote from Mabel Norman herself that reads, if I'm lucky, I hope to make the world laugh again as I once did. Thank you, and I really hope you enjoy the film.